Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today's system is from the user Topic AO and Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending in their system. With that all said and done everybody, let's get into this. So their system is called the Fahara system I believe it's called. So let's go ahead and get it ready, it should already be here, there it is. Okay, let's see what they have got for us here. Okay, straight into the action, okay. So, the Fahara... Quadrinary system. This star system is massive activity. It contains four separate star systems within it. Some bigger than others, of course. Okay, so the Fahara. So let's have a... Oh, so it really is part of a bigger complex. Okay. Nice. So the star itself. Largest star in the system. It has the most planets at eight. Compared to the sun, it's about 3.5 times larger. There it is. We're open up. Wait, come on. There it is. It's got a lot more luminous as well. Okay, first of the planets. We've got Fuglia. I like the name, Fuglia. The closest planet. It is very hot here, with an average of 372 degrees. It has a thick atmosphere made out of mostly water vapour, which leads us to believe that Fuglia used to have large oceans across the surface. It has oceans called Lachia, which contains big craters. Or well, moon, sorry. There it is. Okay, and there's the moon. Put the craters on. Very nice. Okay. Looking good. Next up, we got this one. Morvidus. Hope I'm saying that right. Nice deep purple shade. It's a vibrant purple gas giant with large rings and four large moons. It, you, it is just a small asteroid that used to have large oceans, but a collision with another asteroid caused the moons to disappear. The inhabitants of the moon are getting ready to leave for good. Um, Echium and Spium are set to collide in the future as they're obviously getting very, very close. You can see them there. Pretty close, aren't they? There they are. Got the other ones here as well. There's the civilization one. Nice. Looking good. Cool. Okay. Next up, we got Crefan over here. It's an Earth like planet with inhabitants. Despite its no intelligent life forms, inhabit the planet yet, which is exactly why the Crefan is the destination of the Tidians. Um. Crosstock, Crefan's only moon is covered with an unknown substance which give it a brownish colour. Okay. So that's an Earth like world for the take in there. And then here is the uh, moon with a brown liquid on it. There you go. Very nice. Next up, we've got Psy over here. Very, very green. Hoo hoo. Okay. Its name comes from the Tidian world for mint, which is to reference the mint green colour of the planet's atmosphere. Underneath lies a rocky surface of water oceans. It is unknown how this planet maintains liquid water at temperatures above boiling point. Maybe it's like high pressure. Extremely high pressure where the atoms physically can't turn to a gas. Kind of like that planet out there where it has burning ice. I can't remember which planet is off the top of my head, but there's one out there, an exoplanet in reality, that has burning ice because it's so highly pressured that the atoms cannot physically turn to a liquid state, which is fantastic. <laughs> Such a weird... Weird thing, but it's, it's crazy. I can't remember which planet that was. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. I'm sure someone went out off the top of the head. Um, next up, we've got Coronus. Well covered in ice and also a lot of cerium as a result. Uh, the planet has potential or is pulled from one outpost as it is the largest of its four moons. Its second largest moon, Cabos, is believed to come from another system. Captured world, hey? There's the moons, and then this one here is the possible captured world. Very strange appearance compared to all the other moons as well. There you go. Next up, we got Aurorium over here. Oh, yes. Has the most moons of all the planets in the system and is named after the bright lights around the poles um, of the planet, known as Aure in Tidian. Its largest moon, Verati, has plant life which is able to survive an extremely low atmosphere pressure under 0 0.001 bars. Ho oh, ho! There you go. That moon's pretty hot, must be some tidal heating. We got a uh, Varti over here. So that's the Earth like looking moon, very nice. And all the other moons as well. Try and go through them more quickly here. Looking good. Awesome. There you go. Great stuff. Alright, next up we have got uh, this one, Wakila. It's another of a gas giant, bigger than Juto. It has the largest moon in the system known as Shu. Because of the size of the moons, it's been hypothesized that they were all planets orbiting before they were captured. Um, Seveni 
Kruveni, sorry, despite not seeming like it has liquid water, which is a black colour, which is here. Looking underneath, you can see it. There it is. Okay, a red surface. Interesting. Here's Shu, the largest moon. Green and blue theme going on there, little patches of water on it. We got Vutstrap here. Very nice. Taking a big jump now, we're heading to Marus. By far the largest planet in the system, five times the size of Jupiter and about half the size of the Sun. However, the planet only has one moon and a very large ring system. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Which points towards interstellar origins. It was once likely a rogue planet before being captured. Okay. There's its moon. Very nice. Alright, so now we're heading to the second star. So now we're jumping over to Unlim. So it looks like a red dwarf. Oh, very red. Whoa! -ho! The red dwarf star, but nothing unfortunately interesting to see about here. Just a regular red dwarf. Got one planet close in. There it is. Oh, very nice colours. Okay. The only planet, and also has three moons. It is notable for having a very neon heavy atmosphere. It's unknown why this is the case. There you go, then the moons. There they are. In orbit of the red star. Very, very red. There you go. Nice. Very little zone as well. Okay. So now we're heading to Swalia. Another red dwarf. Nothing really to write home about. Yep. Then we have Corny over here. Tidally locked by any chance. Is what known as an eyeball planet it, as it is tidally locked. Nothing else here really, but it does have liquid water in some areas. Okay. Oh, it's like one of those weird ones. Look, you can see yeah, it's got little patches of water where it's cooler. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. So the water would have to be around this area here. The deep, deep blue area. Right on the side. Let's get a full look at this guy. I want to see this. So, oh, yeah, there you go. So you can see it there, yeah. Okay, let's just hide all the... Aha! Uh -huh. Frozen on the back. Little patches there, but then... Scorch hot, frozen back. Such a weird design. They're, such, they're so cool worlds like that. They are so cool. Um, there you go. Looks like we've got this one over here. Fin on Mars. Another has a world, although life here has a hard time due to existing or due to the relative instability of its star. If I had to make a guess, I'd say life forms have about 100,000 years left. Okay. There you go. Red Dwarf could be unpredictable. And now we're heading to the next star, which is over here. All the way in. Okay, so it's all by itself. White Dwarf star that was originally an A-type star before dying. Now it's only one of only one of five planets remain, which is all the way over here. Quite a far one. Noro. The only remaining planet, and is grey in colour, but of course you wouldn't know that unless you had a momentarily large flashlight. Noro only has one large asteroid orbit in it called Lu. Probably formerly something a lot prettier, but has been absolutely ruined by the blast of the star's death. So there it is. And lastly, next star, Sezina. Over here. So it's a white dwarf. It's a spacecraft with it as well in orbit. A white dwarf star, though this one is fine towards the system, it has nothing orbiting it, absolutely nothing, right? That's the system, I hope you like it. So what probe is it? Is it the New Horizons probe in the far future? It may be. There it is. It's ended up here. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Cool. Unknown spacecraft. So there you go. So that is it for this system, the Fahara system. I hope I'm saying that right. There it is. Quite a nice lineup in here. Like the one with the rings, especially, the nice big rings. Looking good. Very, very nice indeed. And we've got the two white dwarfs. The tidally locked world's always cool. I always like those sort of planets. They're always awesome with a little twilight bit of the water around the corner. That's always cool. But yeah, there we go. Again, massive thank you to the creator of this system, Topic AL, for sending in the system. Hope you guys all enjoyed it in the comments. Um, let me know what you think. And yeah, let's see if we can go for 100 likes on today's video as well, guys. Subscribe for more. Helps on journey to 50,000 subscribers. And with that all said and done for everybody, make sure you have a great day out there. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.